Good evening. My name is Carolyn Schoenberger, and I want to welcome you to this version of Immigrant Issues. And we have a lot to talk about tonight because there are many programs out there that can help people that, unfortunately, the word has not gone out. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the Schoenberger Public Interest Law Foundation, which was established to assist people in the community who need help for issues such as guardianships and also wills and immigration issues. Also, the Schoenberger Public Interest Law Foundation provides free public interest presentations on issues such as becoming a citizen, writing a will, how do you protect your assets, forming a limited liability company. So if you are interested in having a free presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to contact the number uh, on the screen for questions now, 312-738-1060, or you can also email me at caroline at schoenbergerfoundation.org. Uh, the Schoenberger Foundation. So again, um, I'm going to repeat this in Spanish, the Schoenberger Public Interest Law Foundation fue establecido para ofrecer servicios al público con tutelas, con asuntos de inmigración, con testamentos. También ofrecemos gratis presentaciones sobre tutelas como proteger sus bienes, uh, también si usted quería crear un negocio, uh, estamos allá para dar presentaciones gratis. Si quería hacerme una pregunta, por favor llámame a 312-738-1060 ahora o más tarde puede uh, mandarme un email, caroline um, a Schoenberger Foundation, uh, Punto org. So, si usted quería hablar más o pedir por una presentación gratis, por favor, llámame. Y es un honor de estar con ustedes esta noche. So, I'm going to switch into English and uh, talk a little bit about a topic that has come to my attention that apparently no one really knows about. I'm going to speak in the English language. I'm going to also speak in the Spanish language. Um, I will have to read more in the Spanish language than the English language. So I have been working recently with people with disabilities very intensely on guardianships. Um, today I attended my first special education uh, meeting to develop an IEP, an individual educational plan uh, that was conducted in the English and Spanish languages. It was really a a wonderful honor to be there with some fabulous teachers who really cared about the child and, and a wonderful client and a wonderful mentor. So I'm very grateful to have had that opportunity and I look forward to having other opportunities to represent people with guardianships and um, eventually special education cases and also to do immigration work. So one of the things that have come to my attention is that people on disabilities who receive Social Security uh, SSI, uh, people with severe disabilities, um, get uh, approximately $750 a month from the government. And uh, if you're a citizen, you're eligible. If you're a lawful permanent resident, in order to be eligible, you have to work 40 hours. Uh, but once you have that, you can't earn more than that money or you're going to be losing benefits. So about three or four years ago, there was a, a new initiative that was passed called an ABLE account. And an ABLE account is set up to permit people receiving SSI to be able to put money away for special causes. So it, it's a wonderful program. Unfortunately, no one knows about this. So if you have a child who, uh, actually, if you, if you have a 19-year-old who has SSI uh, and perhaps that person would need a new wheelchair, uh, again, this is like a savings account that you can go to. So 
you won't lose eligibility for SSI or Medicaid or any other program that you're getting because of your disability. And the ABLE account is a savings account. You have to go through the state. It's called il.savewithable.com. You have to go through the state to set up an ABLE account. The number to call is 888-8683. Pardon me, 888-609-8683. You have to go through the state to set up an ABLE account. It can have as much as $100,000 in this ABLE account and you or someone else can contribute up to $15,000 a year. So your friends can do this, you can have a GoFundMe, and there are many different uses that you can use for the ABLE account. For example, you want to go to college, you need a wheelchair, you need housing, you need transportation, a special car, legal fees, financial management, there are all kinds of qualified expenses that you can use the ABLE account for. And again, no one knows about this. Oversight, monitoring, personal services, unfortunately, um, funeral and burial expenses can be covered too. So for $15,000 a year, again, you can do a GoFundMe account. Uh, if you win, uh, a settlement in a case instead of losing qualification for SSI, you can have the money placed into an ABLE account. So again, the maximum is $100,000, $15,000 a year, and uh, your friends can contribute to it also. Now, again, you have to be on SSI a disability that started before the age of 26, or if you become blind, or if you have a severe, severe disability and a written diagnosis by a physician, you can become eligible to open an ABLE account. And as I mentioned, ABLE accounts are run by the state of Illinois. So it's not like you're giving money to someone to invest it for you. You're giving your money to a state agency uh, that's acting like a bank. And this is something that is not only available in Illinois, it's available in other states, but uh, for people that I'm talking to, uh, again, I'm going to repeat, the telephone number to call is 888-609-8683. Or you can start something online at IL, that stands for Illinois, il.savewithable.com. And an ABLE account is A-B-L-E. So il.sav as in Victor, E, W-I-T-H-A-B-L-E dot com. That's who you contact to open your ABLE account. So again, if you received SSI before the age of 26, and there are other qualifying types of things if you become blind, um, or in, in some cases a physician can help you, you qualify for this wonderful savings program. And again, you want to go back to school, you want to learn a trade, health and wellness, if you need something that your insurance or Medicaid will not cover, if you need housing assistance, transportation, you need a specialized car, a wheelchair accessible car. The ABLE account is there for that purpose. Also to help manage uh, financial management, etc. Employment training. If you want to have training as a mechanic, if you want to have training uh, to, to do other things, and again when we're talking about disabilities, disabilities could be anything from physical disabilities to emotional disabilities. The ABLE account will help people no matter what their disability is. So if you have any questions dealing with an ABLE account, I can try to respond. So please call the number on your screen, 312-738-1060. So please call and, and um, I'm happy to answer questions to 
the best of my ability. I'm now going to talk in the Spanish language about an Abel account. So, Quintus Abel, Abel, A B L E, A B L A, para personas con discapacidad severa. Un, una cuenta Abel es asistencia con gastos calificados por discapacidad sin perder la elegibilidad para los beneficios de seguridad de ingreso suplemento, SSI, o Medicaid, a igual que otros programas de discapacidad. Usted puede uh, tener saldos de 100 mil dólares o menos son excluidos del límite de recursos de seguridad de ingreso suplementario, SSI, para determinar la habilidad. Usted puede contribuir 15 mil dólares al año. Sus amigos y familiares pueden contribuir a la cuenta ABO. Si usted es elegible para los beneficios de seguridad de ingreso suplementario, SSI o beneficios de seguro social por discapacidad por una discapacidad iniciada antes de la edad de 26 años o porque es evidente en conformidad con la ley de seguro social o por tener una discapacidad severa similar o un diagnóstico por escrito de un médico, de un médico con licencia. Los gastos que esta cuenta ABO puede pagar, uh, so gastos calificando, calificados incluyen educación, salud, bienestar, vivienda, transportación, honorarios legales, gestación financiera, uh, capacita, uh, capacitación, apoyo laboral, asistencia de tecnología, servicios personales, supervisión y monitoreo, servicios fenebres y antierres. Si, si usted está interesado en abrir o aprender más de una cuenta Abel, hay de llamar 888-609-8673. Voy a repetir esto. 888-609-8683. Puede también visitar la página il.savitabla.com para más información. Il Punto savewithable.com. So, um, again, this is a program that is very, very important to people with disabilities because it can pay uh, for items that the $740 a month that you might receive from SSI will not cover. Uh, things such as, again, enhanced wheelchairs, wheelchair accessible vehicles, and you can spend you can save up to 15000 You can do a GoFundMe. I want to buy a new wheelchair accessible vehicle. GoFundMe. But the limit every year is 15000 and a total of $100,000. So I'm going to repeat the information one last time. 888-609-8683. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about some other items that might be of interest. Uh, so, for those of you who have been in the United States as a lawful permanent resident for five years or for three years you've been married to a U.S. citizen and live with a U.S. citizen, you are eligible to become a United States citizen. And I urge you to do so. However, it is taking longer and there needs to be more care when you make the application because, unfortunately, uh, we're in a time that is not friendly to immigrants, and there are, unfortunately, um, problems. So I'm going to talk about some of the problems that can occur. The first problem is, in many cases, they're going to, at an interview, ask for your taxes. 
and I hope to have a tax expert on that can talk a little bit more about taxes. However, many times there are tax preparers out there and they think they're doing you a favor by suggesting that you create dependents and that way you'll pay fewer taxes or you'll get more money back. You must avoid that. You must never lie to the federal government or to any government. I would urge you not to lie in general. Um, but in your taxes, if you're married and living with a spouse and you claim to be head of household, that's a problem. You can only be head of household if you're not living with your spouse. Your spouse may be living in another state, another country, but if you're living together, you're not qualified to be to pay taxes as head of household. The other thing is creating dependents. You may list a niece and nephew, and in some cases you can even list people in Mexico or Canada through NAFTA, although that uh, may be changing. But you have to be able to demonstrate that if you list someone as a dependent, if they're not living with you, you can demonstrate that you have paid 50% of their upkeep. And immigration frequently will look, and if they, they may ask you, demonstrate that you are paying at least 50% of uh, your niece that you're claiming as a dependent in Mexico. If you can't do so, that can be a problem. You can get denied for not having a good moral character, which means you have to wait five more years to a, try to become a citizen. So I would urge you that in the event that you are told by a tax preparer that you can declare a head of household, and I've seen cases where people, both the husband and wife, have declared taxes as head of household, you cannot do that. You cannot do that, even if you're not caught, you cannot do that. It is not legal to do that, and there are tax preparers out there who give people bad advice. Uh, another problem when you want to become a United States citizen is that you cannot be out of the country for more than a year without permission. And there, if you, there's a reason you have to apply, you want to go to school or send someone to school in another country, there's an application for permission to do that. Because if you're out of the country as a lawful permanent resident for a year, immigration would say you have abandoned your residency. And, and that, that's a problem. I handled a case a few years ago and was very, very lucky because my client, unfortunately for him, had a heart attack in Mexico and was out of the country for two years. When he came back in, he managed to come back in, but they put him into deportation court. And when we demonstrated that he was not willingly out of the country for two years, the judge ruled in our favor and he was reinstated as a lawful permanent resident. This took over a year. The gentleman was elderly, not in terribly good health, and between the costs and litigation, even if you don't, the lawyer doesn't charge a lot of money, um, there are still expenses that you have to pay in court. And the judge was kind and we managed to reinstate his residency. But the emotional cost of having to go to court is very, very hard. He didn't know what was going to happen. So that is one of the things in listing the countries that you go to. And when people say, how are they, how is immigration going to know? The bottom line is you shouldn't lie to anyone. But definitely, you don't know how much the government knows about you these days. And why take a chance in lying? You want to go visit someone, come back within five months. And it, again, so if you're gone for more than six months, if you're gone for more than six months, uh, you're going to have a problem uh, if you want to become a citizen because you have to demonstrate continuity. And if it's six months, it's more than uh, you've broken continuity and you've got to wait uh, either five years if you're not married to a United States citizen or three years 
if you are living with a United States citizen uh, and married to the United States citizen. So those are some of the pitfalls. One of the worst areas that you might encounter um, is if you have been arrested because many cases the Immigration Service not only wants a report on a certified copy of the disposition, but they may want all of the records. So you may have been charged with an aggravated assault which would make you ineligible to become a citizen and might even start a deportation defense against you. Uh, but they want all of the papers. So if you have been arrested, even if you end up being convicted, you really need to consult with an immigration lawyer just to make sure that there are no problems. Again, there are massive workshops, and if you've never been arrested, never been out of the country for more than six months, don't have any problems with your taxes, uh, again, that many people go and have there been many successes. But if you've been arrested, your taxes, you've been given bad advice and you have declared taxes as head of household when you're living with your spouse or have been arrested, you need to go and talk to a person who has experience in dealing with these issues. Um, I do want to talk just for a moment or two about driving under the influence. There have been a, some recent cases that indicate that one DUI, where, which is a misdemeanor, will not disqualify you, two can. And now that we're going to have marijuana that is legally being sold for recreational use in the state of Illinois, people need to remember, it may be legal in Illinois, it's not legal in Wisconsin, it's not legal federally, and a being arrested because you're high on marijuana or you have marijuana could very well create massive problems for you. So the best thing that you could probably do is if you are going to indulge after it becomes legal, don't do so and drive. Don't do so um, and go to a different state or try to go into a federal building or go on a plane because it is still illegal and one must use care um, in, in doing this. So that, that's something that is coming up. But any criminal offense, any, any arrest has to be disclosed if you have expunged it. Before you expunged your case, you need to, first of all, um, get certified copies of all of your records before you expunge it because, in fact, uh, your, an officer may ask you for those records. Now, if you've expunged an arrest or had the record sealed, you will have to pay a lawyer to go back to court, open up the case, get the records, get them certified, and then you can reseal them. Again, that's time and that's money. So, again, I'm just urging people to please be careful in doing this. So, I think people should become United States citizens. Being a resident is like being constantly on probation. But I think it is crucially important to be careful in what you do. And there are lawyers out there at, at different price levels. You don't have to pay a huge amount of money to get decent advice. So with that, I'm going to wish everyone you know happy and safe holidays. Please remember, again, Marijuana laws in Illinois are not federal laws, not laws of Wisconsin or Indiana. So please be careful. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. We're going to announce a couple of citizenship workshops with the Polish American Association and also with Irish Community Services. So please take care. Have happy and safe holidays. Thank you.